morning guys. Welcome to uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut on this brisk Wednesday morning. And uh, today we're gonna go through the Garmin uh, TXI suite as it's installed in the Sierra SR22. So this is the current cockpit arrangement. Uh, we have our uh, two 10.7 inch displays as a PFD MFD configuration with the dual 650s and you know, at least for now, a Nestec 55 until DFC 90 becomes uh, available. So we'll uh, power it up and uh, see what it does. All right, so battery two, battery one. I'll just let the mains uh, put themselves up. Okay, so you get your uh, profile on both the number one and number two display. So you just press continue on that. Number one, it's usually best to have a map up. Number two, I typically throw it in in engine mode. And we have dual ARs, so both of those will uh, come up in due course. Okay, so right now we're on ground power. Just waiting for the GTNs to boot up. Okay, now we got the GTNs up. Uh, GPS is still acquiring signal. And once we have that, we'll get synthetic vision and all the other displays active. Okay, now I've got everything going. So let's uh, take a little look at uh, what we have here. We've got our uh, moving map, just like a big iPhone. We can zoom in, scroll around, really do whatever we want. Additionally, in the uh, lower right-hand corner, we can set uh, the types of overlays we want, you know, how cluttered we want that uh, map to get. And, uh, you know, everything, just like on the GTNs, uh, comes back to the home button. So if you want traffic display, you get your little bullseye that goes out from there. If you want terrain, we got that. If you want charts, well, we have that too. Um, basically, uh, you know, the Garmin version of uh, Safe Taxi. In addition to, you know, your weather data link switching between FISB and Sirius XM, uh, provided that you have uh, the uh, GDL interface for that Sirius. So if you're familiar with the GTN at all, um, you'll recognize uh, this menu with uh, setting uh, how detailed you want your uh, map to be. And really it all comes back to the, uh, the home button here. If we decide we want the PFD to be without the map, all we do is uh, tap the full button and uh, now we got our full uh, you know, Garmin perspective type of uh, PFD on the left hand side. Now just like on the Perspective or any G1000, uh, we have our bearing pointers uh, that are uh, set up over here. So you select a menu and select our uh, HSI setup bearing pointers and the sensor of interest for those bearing pointers in my case. So we have NAV1 and NAV2 that we use uh, to keep track of as we're going down Victor Airways here in the Northeast. Our HSI to be in a map format, we can have that set up there as well and uh, basically we'll just have a magenta line type of uh, arrangement with a fully zoomable map within that level HSI compass. All of our uh, flight planning is done here within the GTN but uh, let's say I want to go from Bridgeport to Kennedy which does happen. Looking down on the map here, seeing the representation, all we really have is the uh, magenta line and uh, no uh, sort of a CDI type representation. Now, if we switch over to green needles, we will get a CDI representation, um, but uh, presently we don't have that uh, set up. Switch over to Bridgeport VOR, um, but it's uh, really just not gonna show us anything useful. It's really only going to display um, the magenta line on that map right there. Now, I do have a CDI up on the top. It's just a little bit more uh, goofy to use. So, you know, if you're gonna be doing navigation in earnest, then you know, it should really be in the uh, normal type of uh, display like that. Now, as far as uh, using the uh, CDI, it's fairly simple. Um, everything is soft. So we just tap on our uh, course, we use our knob on the left and the right to adjust our CDI to uh, the desired uh, course. Alternately, if we're in a rush, 
and we just need direct something. We just tap the direct course and it snaps right to. Map mode, if we uh, wanna go uh, direct, we just tap that. You see the needle snap toward uh, the station. But again, you know, your CDI is up here to actually give you the dot uh, course uh, deviation that you would normally be required. But it's a different presentation, the same information. Uh, no better, not worse, it just is. If we get tired of the uh, synthetic vision, we can of course go back to normal Garmin 1000 mode. Personally, I like to keep it on because uh, if there's a loss of integrity on GPS, that uh, terrain will disappear and it's kind of a nice uh, feature to have uh, once that GPS signal goes away. Another thing uh, we can be doing is also modifying our airspeeds um, to set them as we need to set them so if we know that our reference speed is going to be you know 77 based on our landing weight you know we can adjust that on here to sort of uh, you know a custom speed you know setting the vertical speed target uh, really not a big uh, deal we just tap it in and uh, we'll get a little uh, carrot up there for our target uh, same thing with indicated airspeed as well so let's just say we want 105 indicated not a big deal, 105 is not at the top and the carrot's gonna be there. Um, and when uh, DSC-90 uh, comes online, this will all be, you know, second nature. Going over to the MFD side, we can see that the screen arrangement is slightly different. We've got uh, some engine indication information and a, uh, a map as well as a permanent uh, attitude indicator. Um, now, let's start off on the engine side and see what's presented here. All right, so for the engine, you've got the endurance, fuel remaining, range, as well as oil, PSI, pressure, uh, fuel flow, uh, scoreboard for EGT and CHT. And then we got some menus to go through on the bottom. For our purposes, uh, the menu is for setting up leaning either Richard Peak or Lena Peak. Uh, Cirrus operation, we are 99% Lena Peak um, as it pertains uh, to Cruz. Tapping on the fuel computer, we'll need to uh, adjust what our remaining fuel will be. So we're just gonna be uh, gonna top off here eventually. We can also just set it, you know, at tabs if we uh, need to, but remember it's a custom uh, setup, so you need to uh, specify what the full capacity is and what the tab capacity is. Particular importance to the engine advisories, uh, particularly if you're in a supercharged or turbo normalized aircraft, uh, we can put in custom CHT you know, and other temperature advisories that would be important for us. Um, you know, for the TN, as part of the STC, your red line is 380. Um, so you don't really want to be beyond that because the detonation margins on are so, so narrow. So it's useful to be able to uh, put, our, uh, put our caution and warnings on here. We have those caution and warnings on here. It flashes over on the PFD. And we get what we set up. Another useful feature in case you're lazy and you don't want to look at the hobs in the flight meter is uh, you can set up your uh, hours to uh, keep track of uh, the lean button. It's just like every other lean button you've ever seen in your life. Bring the mixture back and see you're looking for the first peak or the last peak. You need to specify which. And if you've uh, done the G1000 or the Garmin Perspective, uh, it should be uh, very familiar to you by now. Back at the uh, main homepage, uh, you know, charts should be extremely uh, self-explanatory. We just happen to be in the airport diagram. Let's just say we're choosing an approach, GPS 2.4, and we can scroll and zoom around and do really whatever we need to do to make that work. So iPad necessary? Eh, not really. Is it a good idea? Uh, generally speaking, yes. Keep it handy. Screen, your flight plan uh, basically duplicates exactly what you have down here on the 650s, so I can't really see much use in having that flight plan up here. This is not really giving you any additional information that you would normally not have on the, uh, on the GTNs. What the data link? Uh, specifying between X7 and FISB. In this case, on the MFD, you've got FISB. Um, but since you're not in the air, you're not going to have it. But uh, of course, you select your uh, 
know, you select the overlays you want, really. And uh, we're doing a combined source for uh, Conus and uh, Regional on FISB radar. And uh, just uh, select the overlays as you see fit, and they will display on the weather page. Waypoint info, uh, remember, uh, all this stuff home runs back to your uh, GTN. So where we're starting off, uh, obviously everything that we can get in the GTN, we can get on the MFD side or the PFD side here. So uh, you know, weather data, if FISB was working, we would have that. Additionally, the airport directory is uh, present in case you need to uh, call customs and make other arrangements when you're heading downrange. Your system side, uh, just like the GTN uh, type of uh, profile, um, you know, you set up uh, your uh, backlight offset in case the uh, little uh, photo cell here is not uh, doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, any LRUs you need to uh, check in on, check the versions and the health. Uh, particularly useful if you're trying to uh, set up your uh, your XM and making sure that's working. So a firmware update coming in Q4 will allow for the MFD side to be an actual MFD and uh, give the option of getting rid of the uh, the attitude indicator that's taking up the rest of the screen. So this uh, portion with the map would then become a full screen option with the uh, remaining uh, data block being for the engine uh, information. Now just like on all products, uh, Garmin 1000 and uh, Perspective, we do have a uh, reversionary mode we can go into, which we have as a toggle switch right here, and uh, gives us our uh, you know, critical information on the uh, PFD side. Now, uh, we will convert this uh, down to have our map and engine information over here in the reversionary mode. And we have everything we need to operate the aircraft uh, safely, followed by the uh, standby instruments at the bottom. Now, one option we have in uh, normal mode is to be able to resize the right side uh, map block, which uh, can be useful. So now we have a bigger map on the PFD side at the expense of the attitude indicator block. So that is that. That is the Garmin uh, TXI um, as it is done in the Cirrus aircraft. You know, it's a big, uh, big leap in capability for you know, aircraft that are equipped either with a six pack or with an Avidyne. Um, but it uh, gives you. Uh, Gives you some pretty good capabilities, and it's uh, certainly a step in the uh, right direction long term. So, if you all have any questions or would like to uh, try it out, you can reach out to me at uh, cirrusinstructor.net, and uh, if I'm in your area, we can uh, set up a time. Y'all be good.